Today I've got a bit of a grab bag video for you. So we're going to start with some integral representations of n factorial and then use that to explore a family of convergent sequences. So I think that's kind of interesting to look at a couple of different things that are related a bit. So the first integral representation which we'll look at is the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n e to the minus x dx. And so this is like related to the gamma function. In fact, it's exactly equal to the gamma function. And so what we'll do is prove that this integral is in fact equal to n factorial using induction. And then we'll prove that the following two integrals are equal to our original integral using a change of variables. Okay, so let's get to it. So I'm going to maybe write this as a claim. So let's make our claim that for all n, which are non-negative integers, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n e to the minus x dx is equal to n factorial. Okay, like I just pointed out, we're going to prove this by mathematical induction. So if we prove this with mathematical induction, we need a base case to start us off. The base case is generally the smallest value of the iterator that we're trying to look at, and that would be n equals zero in this case. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll take our base case to be n equals zero. So that means we have the integral from zero up to infinity of x to the zero, which is one, e to the minus x dx. So that's pretty nice because we can just take the antiderivative very easily here. Taking the antiderivative, we get something like minus e to the minus x evaluated from zero up to infinity. But let's maybe be careful for a change and let's say this is evaluated up to t and then we'll take the limit as t approaches infinity. Okay. So what does that really mean we're doing? That means we're doing the limit as t approaches infinity of e to the zero, which is one minus e to the minus t, which is one over t. Okay, but now as t goes to infinity, this one over e to the t will trend off towards zero and we get this whole thing is equal to one, which is of course zero factorial. Okay, so our next case will be to make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis will be to suppose for some value k, which is bigger than or equal to zero, our claim holds. So in other words, we have the integral from zero to infinity of x to the k e to the minus x dx is equal to k factorial. And then our next step will be to consider the k plus first case, which is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of x to the k plus one e to the minus x dx. And then since this is a polynomial times a transcendental function, that's a fairly standard integration by parts setup. And so we'll take u and set it equal to our polynomial part, that's x to the k plus one. That makes du equal to k plus one times x to the k dx, just by taking the derivative. And then dv is equal to e to the minus x dx. That makes v equal to minus e to the minus x. So we have something like that. But now let's notice that that will turn this into u times v evaluated from zero to infinity. So that's gonna be minus x to the k plus one e to the minus x evaluated from zero up to infinity. And then we'll have minus v du, so the minus sign will cancel and we'll get plus k plus one times the integral from zero to infinity of x to the k e to the minus x dx. Okay. But now using standard limiting techniques, which we'll skip here, this term will trend off towards zero, and then we can apply the induction hypothesis to this integral. So in the end, we get k plus one times k factorial, which is what we get from the induction hypothesis, which is of course equal to k plus one factorial. So that finishes this proof by induction and tells us that this integral is indeed equal to n factorial for all non-negative integers n.
Okay, now we'll explore these two by doing a change of variables. So now we're gonna look at two more integrals which are also n factorial, and that is the integral from zero to one of the natural log of x to the nth power, and also the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus nth root of x. And this one is in fact new to me. I just saw it for the first time the other day. Okay, so let's look at this one first. So here we can do a substitution, which will simplify it into our original integral representation. And the substitution will go like this. Let's set y equal to the natural log of x, but that means that x is equal to e to the y. Let's also look at the bounds of integration. So as x goes to zero from above, we see that y goes to minus infinity. That's by the limit of the natural logarithm function. And then as x goes to one from below, we see that y approaches zero. And that is because the natural log of one is equal to zero. Okay, good. And now we can translate this entire thing into our new setting. Maybe we need one more thing here, and that is if x is e to the y, then dx is e to the y dy. So something like that, maybe. Okay, so let's see what we have. So our starting integral can now be written as the integral from minus infinity up to zero of, let's see, y is natural log of x, so we have y to the n power. And then after that we have dx, which is e to the y dy. And now we can do another change of variables where we replace y with minus y, and we'll see that this changes into the integral from zero to infinity of y to the n, e to the minus y dy, but in fact, we pick up a minus sign out front. If we're replacing y with minus y, then we pick up a minus y to the n from here, and a minus y to the one from here, so we get minus minus one to the n plus one. So that means this is not in fact equal to just the plain old factorial. This is like some sort of positive or negative factorial depending on the parity of n. So that means here, here we have this is minus one to the n plus one times n factorial. So that's like close enough I think to being an integral representation of n factorial. Okay. Now let's look at this last one. So let's make a substitution. So let's maybe make a substitution of z equals the nth root of x. Notice that that means that x is equal to z to the n, which means that dx is equal to n times z to the n minus one dz. Furthermore, let's notice that nothing changes with the bounds of integration. When x is zero, z is zero. And when x goes to infinity, z also goes to infinity. So that means this integral changes to n times the integral from zero to infinity of z to the n minus one, e to the minus z dz, where I've taken this n outside of the integral. Then we can apply our result that we have over here to collapse this integral to an n minus one factorial and we have n times n minus one factorial which is clearly equal to n factorial. So that means we have another integral representation of the factorial right here. Okay, so now let's look at a little bit of an application of this problem. So here's a nice application of our new, well, new to me, like I said, integral representation of the factorial to a convergence series. So here we'll show that for all natural numbers n, the series, which is the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of two to the nth root of m converges. Okay, so how could we do this? Well, let's notice that we have the integral from zero to infinity of one over two to the nth root of x dx converges. And how do we know that converges? Well, that's because we can rewrite this as the integral from zero to infinity of two to the minus nth root of x dx. And then we can take two and rewrite it as e to the natural log of two. 
So that means here we have this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the natural log of 2 times, let's see, we have minus, I'll bring that out front, and then we have the nth root of x dx. But then we can raise this natural log of 2 to the nth power and bring it inside this nth root, and we'll have the integral from 0 up to infinity of e to the minus the nth root of the natural log of 2 all raised to the n power times x dx. And then using a substitution where we take y and set it equal to the natural log of 2 raised to the nth power times x, we can translate this into a multiple of our integral down here, which we see converges. So since this converges, and our integral right here is a multiple of this convergent integral, that means that our original integral also converges. But then, if our original integral converges, then by the integral test, that means our series also converges. So just to reiterate, we are showing that this series converges by using the integral test and comparing it with the integral of an appropriate function. And then we're showing that the integral of that appropriate function converges by what we saw over here. Okay, so we've got this converges. Now I'd like to end the video by looking at some values of this series for certain choices of n. So let's set s of n equal to this series where we've got this nth root. And let's explore some values here. So let's notice s of 1 is the sum as m goes from 0 up to infinity of 1 over 2 to the m. That's because we're taking the first root of m, but that's just m to the first power. Okay, but that's exactly a geometric series. That's a geometric series with starting term one and common ratio half. So we know that sums up to one over one minus half. In other words, we get the number two. And that's actually the only one that it's easy to find a closed form for. In fact, I'm not even sure it's possible to find a closed form for others of these. Maybe post in the comments if you know a trick. But you can do some approximations. And I just did these approximations in Mathematica. Okay, so let's take S of 2. So just to reiterate what that is, that's the sum as m goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the square root of m. So that's something like this, 1 over 2 to the 0, which is 1, 1 over 2 to the 1, which is 2, plus 1 over 2 to the square root of 2, plus 1 over 2 to the square root of 3, and so on and so forth. And Mathematica approximates this to be something like 4.79. Okay, so we've more than doubled it just by increasing from 1 to 2. So that's pretty interesting. But then you can check that S of 3 is approximately equal to 18.68. So notice increasing from 2 to 3 multiplies by about 4. So it's even bigger. And then finally, S of 10 is absolutely humongous. And S of 10 is in fact approximately equal to 1.417 times 10 to the 8. And so as you can imagine, most of them converge to absolutely enormous numbers. Okay, so if you've liked this video, I've got a lot of other videos on the channel which are pretty interesting. Probably one that you would like is on the screen right now if you want to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.